Hello friends, today we will discuss the effect of sympathetic and parasympathetic nerve stimulation on the heart rate. Okay, as all of us know that whenever uh, sympathetic nerves are stimulated, heart rate increases and whenever parasympathetic nerves like the vagus nerve is stimulated, heart rate decreases. Today we will discuss the molecular mechanism, how exactly this effect takes place. Okay, now consider this uh, as a SA nodal cell, okay, SA nodal cell. Okay, so cell in a SA node that is the pacemaker SA node. So, on the surface of this cells there are receptors even for the sympathetic nerves and even for the parasympathetic nerves. The receptors which are there for the sympathetic nerves they are known as beta receptors and more specifically they are termed as beta 1, beta 1 adrenergic receptors, beta 1 adrenergic receptors, these are known as 7 pass receptors or serpentine receptors also. So, the neurotransmitters which are released by the sympathetic nerves like norepinephrine or epinephrine, norepinephrine or epinephrine, whenever they bind to these beta adrenergic receptors, they cause certain molecular changes in the SA nodal cell and ultimately the heart rate will increase. Similarly, when the parasympathetic nerves like the vagus nerve, so vagus nerve they release mainly the acetylcholine, acetylcholine as the neurotransmitter and this acetylcholine once it binds to the receptor, the receptors for this uh, cholinergic receptor it is known as more specifically M2 muscuranic receptor, M stands for muscuranic and more specifically M2 receptors of the muscuranic receptors, then again it leads to some series of certain chemical changes in the cell which ultimately uh, decreases the heart rate. Today we are going to discuss how exactly that molecular changes will cause this increase or decrease in the heart rate. Okay. Before that, let us discuss the uh, cells in the cardiac muscles and the innervation that is sympathetic and parasympathetic nerves, how they are uh, like uh, supplied to the different cells of our uh, heart muscles. Okay. So, again to understand this, I will just draw a line diagram of the heart. So, I will just draw a line diagram of the heart. So, as you know, there are four chambers in the heart, okay, right atrium and left atrium, right and left atrium and ventricles, right. So, let me draw once again. So, this is right atrium, this is left atrium, then we have ventricles, right ventricle and left ventricle, okay. Now, we have even the conducting system that is the specialized conducting system which is mainly made up of SA node, then we have the AV node, AV node, then we have the bundle office and uh, right bundle branch, left bundle branch, then the Purkinje fibers, okay, which ultimately supply the ventricular muscle. This is the conducting system and SA node is again interconnected to the AV node by the conducting pathways and there is actually a fibrous tissue which is present between the atrial and the ventricles so that the electrical activity does not passes from the atria to the ventricles. So, atrial muscle acts as a syncytium separately and ventricular muscles acts as a syncytium separately. Okay? So, we already discussed in the previous video the electrical activity in the uh, atrial muscles and the ventricular muscle that is the action potential which we got a typical graph like this okay, in atria and ventricular muscles. Also, we have discussed the action potential in the SA node which we got a graph like this. Okay? So, those who have missed that uh, this one video, lecture video, I request them please go back to our channel Doctor's Corner in that just go to the playlist section in the subject physiology either in the English or Hindi. You can check out for this video action potential in the cardiac muscles and the pacemaker potential to understand this lecture very clearly. Okay? So, this electrical activity in the SA node will be like this and the other normal atrial and ventricular muscle we get electrical activity like that, right. Now, once this SA node and AV node are, uh, sorry SA node more specifically, this SA node stimulated by the norepinephrine and acetylcholine, how exactly the scenario changes, let us see, okay. So, for that, once again, once again I will draw a SA nodal cell, consider this as a SA nodal cell and what are the changes? we will see here. Okay? So, at the resting condition, at the resting condition a normal SA node electrical activity which we have discussed in detail in the previous video, I am not going to discuss now. So, just remember we got a graph like this. Okay? We got a graph like this, you know the reason, this is known as pre 
potential and all. So, it is at minus 60 millivolt, the resting membrane potential will be at minus 60 millivolt. When it's, once it reaches minus 40 millivolt, there is a threshold potential, there is a threshold potential minus 40 millivolt and we get an action potential of around plus 5 or plus uh, 10 millivolt, then again repolarization phase. So, this continues for the next impulse, again the same thing, the same story, okay. So, consider these things. So, this will causes this electrical activity, it will send to the neighboring uh, atrial muscles and there will be action potential in that atrial muscle stipulated by this SA nodal electrical activity. So, basically this is the electrical activity in the SA node, okay. So, and the difference between this time duration is 0.8 second year, 0.8 second year, 0.8 second year. So, this will cause us one heartbeat. So, if it is 0.8 second, roughly it is on uh, 1 meter on 75 beats in a normal uh, SA node, the rate of impulse, okay. But once there is stimulation by the sympathetic nerves, once there is a stimulation by the sympathetic nerves. So, you know sympathetic and parasympathetic division of the autonomic nervous system, again I will highlight few important points regarding that sympathetic and parasympathetic division, sympathetic. Now, the sympathetic division will supply all the parts of the heart, that is SA node, atrium, AV node, AV bundle, even the ventricular muscles, all the parts by the sympathetic nerves, okay. So, it will supply the SA node, AV node, Purkinje fibers, okay, AV bundles and atrium and ventricles. What does it mean? That is, there are re beta adrenergic receptor, that is beta 1 adrenergic receptors are present on all the structures of the heart muscle. Now, if we compare with the parasympathetic division of the nerve supply to the heart, parasympathetic, mainly it is by the vagus nerve, okay, by the vagus nerve, it is the 10th cranial nerve. Now, this vagus nerve, right vagus nerve will supply the SA node and left vagus nerve will supply the AV node, okay, because embryological development, right side, this SA node developed from the right side, it is the right vagus nerve and embryologically this AV node derived is supplied by the left vagus nerve, okay, but ultimately it is supplied by the vagus nerve. So, for this vagus nerve, it will act on the receptors, these receptors are known as muscuranic receptors or known as M2 receptors, more specifically M2 receptors, okay, but the distribution of the nerve supplied by the parasympathetic division, it will supply only the SA node and the AV node, not the ventricular muscles, but however, it will supply to the Purkinje fibers also a bit and a few of the atrial muscles, a few of the atrial muscles, but no ventricular muscles will have a direct supply by this parasympathetic division, this is the difference. Sympathetic division supplies all the cells, but parasympathetic mainly the SN and AV node, a few fibers of the atrial muscle, that is they will supply only the conductive system, they do not have supply to the ventricular muscle, okay. Remember this basic fact, now let us see that the molecular level, how the sympathetic stimulation and parasympathetic stimulation increases or decreases the heart rate, right. So, first we will see the sympathetic division. So, whenever there is stimulation of the sympathetic division, the uh, neurotransmitter which is released is either norepinephrine or epinephrine, okay. Just imagine norepinephrine, NE, norepinephrine or noradrenaline which is released once it binds to the beta 1 adrenergic receptor, what are the chemical changes that takes place. So, inside the cell, whenever it binds, it leads to the stimulation of G proteins, okay, G stimulatory protein which has alpha unit, beta and gamma unit, G stimulatory proteins is activated. Once this G stimulatory proteins are activated, what will happen is, it will causes G stimulatory proteins once it is uh, activated, what does it cause is, it will stimulate the adenylyl cyclase, okay, there is one chemical substance known as adenylyl cyclase, okay. Once this G proteins are stimulated, it will stimulate the adenylyl cyclase, okay. So, once this adenylyl cyclase are stimulated, what will happen? Once this adenylyl cyclase is stimulated, there is conversion of, uh, there is conversion of ATP to AMP that is cyclic AMP. This is the main thing, second messenger. So, this binding of beta 1 
this norepinephrine on the beta 1 receptors stimulate the G stimulatory protein and this G stimulatory protein ultimately act on the adenyl cyclase to convert ATP to cyclic AMP. So, there is increase in the level of this cyclic AMP. So, this increased level in the cyclic AMP will activate certain kinases that is the protein kinases and this protein kinases ultimately what it will do is it will phosphorylate the calcium channels, calcium channels phosphorylation and these calcium channels are phosphorylated and open and calcium will enter inside the cell. Calcium will enter inside the cell that is the positivity inside the cell will increase. So, once the calcium enters inside the cell it will enter it will alter the chronotropy that is the heart rate. How? This is the normal electrical activity this 0.8 second, 0.8 second, 0.8 second, 0.8 second, 75 bits per minute right. Now, once the calcium enters here this minus 60 millivolt the positivity means it will become minus 50 immediately and this minus 40 millivolt threshold it is reached very fast and once it is reached very fast so your heartbeat that is the electrical impulse will be very fast okay then the second heartbeat again it will be very fast like this so you can see the difference so this was what the normal this was the normal normal so there were normally just imagine there are three electrical impulses in a given time period normally only three electrical impulses were there in a given time period but once this sympathetic stimulation by the by beta or adrenergic receptor on the sa node takes place through all these chemical things ultimately calcium will release inside because of increase of cyclic amp and this calcium causes this electrical changes that is they mainly affect the slope of the resting moment potential and this threshold potential is achieved very fast because the positivity of the calcium helped it to attain very fast and the it will reach the firing level fast and action potential achieved fast. So, in this duration instead of the 3 normal what we will get is we will get uh, 4 just imagine by simple simulation 4 normal electrical activity which will uh, changes into mechanical event and the heartbeat increases instead of 75 times it may be around 100 times or 80 times whatever the heartbeat will increase okay in a given time period now this type of increase in the heartbeat by the stimulation by the sympathetic nerves it is called as positive chronotropic effect chronotropy so in indirectly we are studying this topic chronotropy positive chronotropic effect that is increase in the heart rate so heart rate is increased due to the stimulation by the sympathetic nerves we have seen the molecular basis now once the uh, parasympathetic nerves are stimulated once the parasympathetic nerves are stimulated how the heartbeat will decrease let us see okay so parasympathetic nerves will act on the m2 receptors and the neurotransmitter which is released is acetylcholine so once the acetylcholine binds to the m2 receptors what happen is again there is stimulation of the g inhibitory protein here g stimulatory proteins was stimulated so again it has alpha units beta and gamma inhibitory units so this alpha and beta gamma units again it will act inhibiting on the adenyl cyclase and ultimately it will cause us decrease in this cyclic amp so once acetylcholine binds to the m2 so it will decrease in the cyclic amp decrease in the cyclic amp again inhibit this protein kinase and phosphorylation of this so less calcium will enter here this is the one mechanism one more mechanism is this beta and gamma subunits that is inhibitory of the g protein a, then they will act on one more ion channels that is the potassium ion channels and they will stimulate this potassium channels and potassium will leave the leave outside from out, inside to outside it will open and potassium will leak outside because of the stimulation by this beta and gamma inhibitory G proteins okay when this M2 receptor so where potassium when it is moving outside so interior will still become negative okay when the interior will become still negative it will decreases the heart rate how exactly let us once again I will show you so again this is the normal electrical activity of the heart okay again there will be three just I am showing a three electrical impulses three electrical impulses normally in a given time period okay in a given time period so you know this is uh, at minus 60 millivolt resting membrane potential this is at the threshold potential of minus 40 millivolt this is around plus 5 millivolt okay now this is at the normal electrical act in the pacemaker but once this due to the stimulation by the acetylcholine okay the 
uh, potassium channel that the potassium ions releases out and this uh, decreased cyclic AMP causes this inhibition of this protein kinase and ultimately the calcium entry is reduced that is uh, interior will become negative. So, what happens is, so to achieve this minus 40 millivolt it will take a longer time, it will take a longer time. So, what will happen is the potential is reached later and the action potential is triggered later and you get a graph like this okay again the potential like this okay so in a given time period suppose there are three normal electrical impulses which are released by the sa node okay this is normal three normal impulses okay by the sa node but due to the vagal activity stimulation vagus nerve stimulation on the muscarinic receptors so main thing is it will alter the slope of this and this uh, minus 40 uh, threshold level is reached late and you will get only two such curves. So, it will decrease as the heart rate. So, this type it is called as negative chronotropic effect, negative chronotropic effect. So, it will decrease as the heart rate. So, instead of three, there are only two electrical signals which will ultimately convert into two heartbeats or two mechanical events. And when there is a st sympathetic stimulation, instead of three here, there will be, we have seen, there will be four okay sympathetic activity so this is how stimulation of sympathetic increases the heart rate and sympathetic of parasympathetic nervous system will decreases the heart rate okay so hope you understood today's lecture so please subscribe our channel and share the link with your friends for this type of educational lectures we will be trying to finish all the cardiovascular system and the other aspects of the physiology in coming videos stay tuned with us thank you